I have now the pleasure to introduce Alvaro Corral, uh, who leads the complex systems group at the Center de Recherche Matemática in Barcelona. Alvaro's research describes models and tries to predict the behavior of complex systems, paying special attention to natural hazards and communication systems, as well as to the necessary statistical tools. He is most known for understanding scaling laws in human language and music. Please welcome Alvaro Corral. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I take from granted um, that you are already combined of the importance of complex system science and complex system research. Uh, indeed, the main problems that human ca ca humankind kind faces in the 21st century are due to our inability to understand complexity, deal with complexity, predict complexity, and tame complex systems. Examples of these are the climate, the economy, politics, diseases, etc. Okay, so I have to confess that I'm not going to talk about any of these important problems. In fact, these important problems can be very useful for society, but I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm, go I'm going to talk about is about music. So, what is music? Is music a, so a sort of uh, divertimento, divertimento in the sense of entertainment, as when you watch a, a football match on TV? Well, for example, let me mention some important char characteristic of music. Music is exclusive of humans, okay? Whales, bears, and animals in general do not do any music as, as we know it, as we know it. Even our closest relatives, relatives in the animal kingdom, the apes, are no, no musical at all, unfortunately for them. Another important characteristic, characteristic of music is that it's common to all human cultures of all times. Even some scholars as Rousseau or Darwin have argued that music was previous to language, before language was Invent, invented or emerged, there was some form of, of music previous to that. Okay. A third important thing is that music really interests people. If you go to the most followed accounts on, on, Twitter, on Twitter, the most followed account, you can find Barack Obama here in the middle. But Barack, Barack Obama is comp competing not with uh, football players, not with Cristiano Ronaldo even, but he's competing with five musicians. So you find five musicians in the six most follower Twitter accounts. Also, if you go to the most viewed videos on YouTube, again, you don't, you don't, find, you don't find here a, a goal by Cristiano Ronaldo or a, a speech by Barack Obama or a funny video by Donald Trump. What you find here is music, okay? So we can conclude that music is really something that interests people and people are, are, able, are able to pay for music, okay? So, also you know that music conveys uh, emotions. All of us are able to distinguish uh, happy music from sad music, and even there is patriotic, patriotic music that excites some people, okay? So, as music trans, uh, transmits some information, we can ask, is music a language or a sort of language? Oh, in order to compare to language, let me recall to you uh, a research that was done uh, several years ago that probably most of you know, uh, this Culturomics project. Some scholars working together with the uh, Google Books team, they uh, scanned, digitized, and analyzed filio, uh, five, million, five million books of all times. This really a lot, five million books is uh, an important part of uh, uh, the knowledge of uh, humankind. And with this information, you can do, for example, li linguistic analysis and arrive to the conclusion that English Currently, the vocabulary of English has more than one million words that are not collected in any dictionary, of course. Okay? Another sort of student, uh, uh, studies that you can do are uh, cultural studies. You can uh, look at the evolution of ideas and concepts. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, see the, clearly the, the axis. Here you can look at the importance, the relative importance of some concept uh, across time. You have here the 40s. Is the microphone? Uh, sort of microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So this is starting in the 40s. The concept that you're looking here is particle physics. Okay? You have particle physics in the 40s. The importance of particle physics was very low, and then you have here an increase. Okay? Progressive increase up to a peak. 
you get a peak at the end of the 80s and then a decline of particle physics. This is an analysis you can do using this uh, culturomics tool that they provide an online, an online platform to, to do this. Okay? And you can compare particle physics with complex systems. You have here complex systems okay, that you see the increase. Increase, increase, uh, it's not rich, no peak, rich, it's rich. So this is just a, a sort of analysis that you can do when you have uh, so, so many data. Okay? Well, going back to music, can one do a similar study uh, like this uh, with music? I mean, a large scale, scale empirical study of digitized music. Of course, for that you need a lot of data, the equivalent of five million books. Okay? Then, would you replicate what musicologists already know, or would you, uh, would you arrive to different uh, insights? Uh, notice that musicolo uh, musicologists' uh, studies, as they are a small scale and manual studies, lack precise measure measurement, quantification, and therefore they also lack objectivity. Not, not to mention they can, they can also enter into selection bias. Okay. Well, what is the complexity here in, in such a study? What, what would be the complexity? Is just big data science? Well, I would say no, it's not just big data science, or not only big data science, because music as language seems to fulfill simple complex system laws. Okay? People working in complex systems, as you know, that many times complex systems fulfill simple laws. Uh, let me start with a qualitative, uh, qualitative law the so famous Viennese composer Arnold Schoenberg wrote that there are two impulses that struggle with each other in art in general. The demand for repetition of pleasant stimuli, stimuli and the opposite desire for variety, for change and for a new uh, stimulus. Damien Sanet, who is a physicist, a modern physicist, say that music converse, conveys a subtle balance of reiteration and change of redundancy and novelty of recurrent shapes and fresh figures. Okay, so we can conclude more or less that as in many other complex systems, music seems to be at the edge between order and chaos in a sort of, crit of critical equilibrium. On the qua quantitative side, you have Sieff law. Uh, I don't have time to explain the, deta the details of Sieff uh, law, but I assume that most of you know what is this about. Here, on the left, you have Sieff law for language. This has been very very much study. This is a statistical law. And on the right, you have thief law for music. So you have here a similarity between uh, language and music. So which is the origin of this thief law? There are people in this room who have uh, um, paid attention to this and have proposed models to explain thief law. Okay. The origin of uh, thief law in music, the possible origin of thief law in music would be just purely linguistic, or maybe it's more aesthetic. There is a sort of magic proportion that if you have a power law distribution, you, you have a perfect balance between the different notes and all that. Also, one could, uh, could study other statistical laws. Just Sieff law could be just the tip, uh, the tip of the iceberg of, of quantitative musicology. Okay? There are many other things one, one can measure. And just to finish, and to combine you about the interdisciplinarity that mu music uh, contains, and also about the complexity that is behind, let me uh, borrow a sentence by Philip Ball. Philip Ball, Ball is a chemist, but he has been very much uh, concerned about music. And he said that music is not simply a kind of mathematics. It is the most remarkable blend of art and science, logic and emotion, physics and physiology, psychology, sorry, known to us. Okay, that's all. Thank you.